If you agree that as pet parents, our goal is to build a loving relationship that lasts with our pets, then you are in the right place right now. So today, we're going to talk about building that relationship using four simple steps. First, a loose leash will help you build that relationship. The corollary, a tight leash, will break the bond sometimes forever or at least indefinitely. Second, doggy decides. Fido must have a choice to learn and to be confident and comfortable with you to build that bond. Third, we're going to talk about the magic six-foot leash. Fourth, simple leash handling 101, how you're going to hold this long six-foot leash. Let's get started. But it's no fun if they're pulling. Because no, it's they, not. No, they, it's, you know, it's a bear. We've, yeah. got, we've got these kids to have fun and to love them. And if it turns into, I'm, I'm either going to get hurt uh, because they're going <laughs> to jerk me and wipe my elbow yeah. out, or they're yeah. going to be pulling me down the street like the old Marmaduke commercial, uh, yeah. It's no fun to take them for a walk. So then what happens? No. Well, your relationship deteriorates. You don't want to take them out. They start turning yeah. into a couch potato. Their weight goes up. Their longevity goes down. It's a yeah. vicious cycle. So having that let's go for a walk and everybody's happy. The dog's happy. You're happy. And, That's right. uh, and you're walking out yeah. there with a leash that you can hold essentially with two fingers nine out of ten minutes of the day. Yeah, um, and that, right. no matter how, what equipment you're using or whatsoever, that really, to me, has to be our goal. Because if we can't go out and have fun, we don't want to do it. So if you like this program and you're getting information, I would love to know that. And the way to share that is to bloop the like button below. Because when you do, it encourages me to make more programs just like this to help you and the others. Thanks so much. Fun is um, um, the name of the game. The concept of free choice, Fido chooses what to do, is 100% essential in the learning training process. If they're pulling at the leash, they're not learning anything whatsoever. It's only when the leash has a U in it and a shape to it that yeah. they can make a choice of whether they're going to pull or pay attention to you whether they're going to go chase the rabbit or the dog next door, or they're going to pay attention to you. And the goal is for them to have fun, and you can snap your fingers and say, spot, and they look at you, and everybody's kind of happy. If the dog's at the end of this thing and it's that tight, and yeah. they're pulling, nothing's, gonna, uh, nothing's going to help. And most people think they got to um, do some type of evil correction. When you don't need a correction, what you need is their brain to be in tune with you. By the way, this program today it was an excerpt from one of my weekly training sessions. For information, if you're interested, check out the description below. Six feet kind of is a number that is distilled down to most, most people's preferred working length. Six feet is perfect from the standpoint you're walking along, you're doing some training. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but if you're going to stop and give them some free rein, free dog, let them go potty, something shorter becomes too short. So you almost need six feet to leave them, leave them go potty, but it seems like you need less to train them. What, um, I don't know what, where you, we're at with leash handling with Roger, but um, in the show ring, we use these little thin things that are about the size of a, um, a cord. And you can, and they're only about two or two feet long, and you can curl the whole thing up and hold the darn thing in your hand and conceal it because what you don't want in the ring is for a bunch of leash flopping around that distracts the judge. Your goal in the ring is for the dog to have no instruction, no distractions, you to be invisible, and the dog to be picture perfect. So the leashes shrink and get smaller. Think about that principle for. Well, for your with your training with Stevie Rose, how how, how thick is your leather leash that she shoot, that she chewed up that you're going to have to replace now? <laughs> three quarters. Yes, yeah, so I, I think it's about th or a half inch. The next, the next, yeah, it looks like three quarters. That, it looks yeah. like three quarters. Think about getting narrower the next time. It'll give you less to hold in your hand. Okay. Go when I you're just... when you're in the leash store. Just I I. You know, go into the fruit store and start squeezing the fruit, and I guess that's bad. But <laughs> when, when you go into the, the pet store for the leashes, I'm continually grabbing them and feeling them. I'll go down the row and feel all the leashes. I'm, 
Um, now remember, leather will get more supple and less stiff over time. But I, I I don't have any three quarter leashes. I got three eighths and half. Three eighths and half. Um, because um, and I have the two sizes because a lot of times I'll work two dogs at once and I'll have a different size for each dog so I know if the inside dog is thick or the, uh, the outside dog is thin. Um, and that's kind of the way I can keep track of it so I know who I've got what where. But the, the thicker the leash, the more you've got to hold and you, it's got the, uh, I think you'll find thinner will be better. I think you'll find okay. thinner will be better. But, but feel it, I mean, those things are expensive. So feel it in the, um, in the pet store and see what really is most comfortable to you. There's a, there's a few nylon leashes that I felt that I bought. Most of the time I bought them and I'm unhappy. Um, but uh, there's one or two that I've actually liked. The flat ones, you couldn't, uh, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't give them to me. But there's some round ones that have a fairly soft feel that you can fold in the light. Because Who's the oh, pup okay. there next Here's to you, Dr. B? Which, which, pup, which puppy is that behind you? Oh, that's Thunderbolt. Oh, okay. Hi, Thunderbolt. <laughs> so you here's a power cord this is my simulation leash okay where are we here? Oh, so, okay <laughs> um thunderbolt come here so that's is he in there yeah so we're going to tie this around his neck bad technique so <laughs> so this is now now my forefoot leash is too short but what you want to be able to do is fold it in your hand kind of like that yeah. I'll, kind of, I'll kind of demonstrate. Um, most people, uh, if you've got a, a, a loop in the leash, you know, most things got a hole in the hand. Put, put your thumb through there and then do a fold, and then you can kind of have a baseball bat grip. You can instantly change <coughs> from six feet to four feet to three feet with a little bit of practice without even thinking about it. And that's that's probably what you should do, Jan, is just practice shortening the leash uh, so it becomes oh, second. <laughs> the second thing is two hands are five times better than one. So if you're trying yeah. to make a correction like this, you got, right. you're going to ruin your elbow or your shoulder. Been there, done that. I've done that for sure. Had, had tennis elbow from my dog handling a long, long time ago. So mm. if you keep your elbow in, to your body, you'll have more leverage and protection for your body and your arms and the like. And if you got two hands, you can use your body and, and hold it and make any type of of holding them back or correction or whatever you need to do. You'll find that okay, that'll yeah. that'll that'll save your elbows and your shoulders. And for, I continually see people walking dogs like this. And I don't know, maybe you're right. Arnold Schwarzenegger and you got all kinds of power in your shoulders and your elbow. But I sure don't. Um, keep trying to fine tune things. Uh, Joni, I'll help you any way I can transitioning from the harness. And uh, Paul will work on making sure that the leash stays loose and you keep going <laughs> forward. And Jan, we're yeah. going to make sure you don't trip on the leash. <laughs> yeah, I know. I like and so for more information about my pet parenting program and how it can help you, you can check out the links in the description below. Thanks for joining me here today.